Significant figures is a concept that comes up fairly often when we're doing problems. So let's take a few minutes to uh, try to dig into those a little bit and, and figure out what we're talking about. So significant figures or sig figs uh, refer to the number of digits of information that we can reasonably report for a given value based upon our level of uncertainty in the precision of that value. Uh, that's a very booky sounding definition. Um, but in short, significant figures are a way for us to communicate how precise a value is. And we communicate that by rounding our numbers off to a certain uh, position. So let's start by just talking about numbers in general. What does a number mean? We use numbers all the time, but do we really know what they mean? Um, to get us rolling on this, let's start with some of the more simple numbers that we can work with. So what about counting numbers? Here I've got a red box, and how many circles are there in that box? This is a counting number. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles in the box. That's an exact number because we've just counted it. These are individual items that we are counting. So seven is an exact number because it is a counting number. It is infinitely precise. I could write this as 7.00000 and keep writing until my arm fell off and I would still need more zeros. So counting numbers are infinitely precise and do not limit are significant figures because again significant figures are communicating precision. What if we've got two of those boxes? So you know I could just go through and count these or I could do some math. Um, in this case I've got two boxes right one two boxes that's another counting number infinitely precise counting number and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles in each box. So seven times two is 14. Again, we have an infinitely precise number because we have infinitely precise two times infinitely precise seven. So that's counting numbers. Counting numbers, pretty straightforward. What happens when we get to numbers that have uncertainty? What happens when we get to measured numbers? So here I've got a green bar and a little ruler that's right next to it. How long is that green bar? Well, now we have to decide how to report that. And this is something that is sig figs, but it's sig figs that you've used. You just didn't really know that they were called sig figs. So Looking at this, the green bar is definitely longer than four, right? And it's definitely shorter than five. So are we just going to report this as four? Well, probably not, because if we look a little bit more closely, it's somewhere between 4.4 and 4.5. Five. Now, I don't know exactly where it is. I'm going to have to estimate it. And when I estimate it, that means that there's some uncertainty in my estimation. I know that this is at least 4.4 units long, but what about that last digit? That last digit, you know, let's call it a six. Um, is it six? Yeah, I don't know. If, if I had a more... Uh, if I had a more precise measuring device and I remeasured it, I wouldn't be that surprised or disappointed if it turned out to be five or if it turned out to be seven. So there's uncertainty in that last digit. And that's really what sig figs are all about, is reporting that uncertainty. <coughs> now, if I've got two of those green bars, um, I could just stack them up or I could add them uh, or I could do some math on them, right? Um, so I've got two bars. That's, again, an infinitely precise counting number. And 
4.46 units per bar. So if I multiply those together, I get 8.92. This one kind of cleans itself up uh, pretty well, but remember, I've still got uncertainty in that last digit, right? Just like here, there's uncertainty in that measurement. There's uncertainty in the math that is involved in that measurement. And that's where we're going to use sig figs uh, to help us out a lot. So let's take a look at what we're calling significant figures. We said significant figures are a way of communicating uncertainty or, in, or communicating uh, variability or estimation in our work. So the number of sig figs in a number is all of the certain digits, all of the digits that we we're confident in plus one digit that we've estimated or one uncertain digit. So uh, looking at a couple of numbers here, these are all five sig fig numbers um, because in all of these cases, we've got, uh, we've got four digits that we're certain of and one digit that we had to estimate. So regardless of where the decimal point is, these are all five sig fig numbers. The big problem or the big challenge that takes a lot of interpretation when we're doing sig figs comes down to zeros. And we've got a few different types of zero to work with. So start with the easiest of these. What about a zero that's in the middle of a bunch of other numbers? Well, that zero in a bunch of other numbers has to be significant because if the numbers on both sides of it are known, then that zero must be known as well. So zeros between digits are certain digits. So those count as sig figs. Leading zeros. Well, we've got a number that's less than one. Leading zeros are really just holding place for us, are really just telling us where the decimal point goes. So they're not significant uh, significant digits. They're not telling us information. They're just telling us magnitude. So for a number like that, the six is a certain digit. The three is an uncertain digit. This is only two sig figs. Trailing zeros cause lots of problems. So we're going to talk about those quite a bit. But trailing zeros um, are placeholders, just like leading zeros, right? So in many ways, these two are similar. Trailing zeros, leading zeros are just holding the decimal place, so they're not significant. Unless, what if that trailing zero is after the decimal place. Well, in that case, that trailing zero is significant because if it wasn't, we wouldn't put it there. Right? If this really was 19.49, we would just write 19.49. We wouldn't write 19.490. 19 so trailing zeros after the decimal are significant. Well, there's still more because zeros are the challenge. Um, what if we're working with a number like 30? 30 could mean a lot of things, right? 30 could mean that I've got 30 items. And then my 30 is a counting number and it's infinitely precise. 30 could also be a measured number. And if it's a measured number, now we've got a bit of a dilemma because is it a one sig fig measured number or a two sig fig measured number? For that, we often need to rely on a little bit of context. So um, just as a, a quick little look here, one way that we can be explicit about that is with a decimal point. If we specifically put the decimal point in 
that's implying that that zero must be a significant figure. So that's one way we can do that. One clue we can look for. Uh, one of the challenges there is what if 30 comes at the end of a sentence? Mm, then it's going to have a period at the end that looks like a decimal place but isn't a decimal. Well, let's look at more of those trailing zeros. What if we've got a bunch of zeros and some of them are significant and some are not based on our measurement? So something like this, where we've got a couple of zeros that are significant and a couple that are not. Um, honestly, those are just hard. But fortunately, we've got a very helpful way to help us work on that. If we just switch that over to scientific notation, it becomes very obvious that the two zeros are significant and the other two are not because the other two just go away. And the two that I've got shown are right trailing zeros after a decimal place. So by showing them, they must be significant figures. All right, sig figs are important for communicating. They're also important to keep track of when we're doing math. Now this is math that we're doing when we don't have context for, um, for uncertainty, when we don't have other context for uncertainty. If we're just doing math problems with a bunch of numbers, um, one way we can treat the uncertainty is by looking at sig fig rules. Now I'll give you a word of warning. Sig fig rules are almost never used when you're doing actual measurements in a lab. So most of the time when we're doing lab measurements, we have other ways of determining uncertainty and we don't have to rely on sig fig rules for that. So when we're just doing math um, outside of a lab setting, we've got some rules that help us work through sig figs. When we're adding and subtracting, the result that we get should be rounded to the least precise position of the inputs. So what does that mean? Uh, a little bit easier to see than to describe here. So when you're adding and subtracting, right, just like you always do, line up those decimal points and then round to whatever position is least precise. So the shortest decimal that we're rounding to. So in this case, uh, 97.35, the uncertainty is starting to show up in that second decimal place. So even though I've got information, or it looks like I've got information all the way down to the fourth decimal place, in this number, my answer has to be rounded to the second decimal place because we're adding and subtracting. What happens if we multiply and divide? In some ways, multiplying and dividing is a little bit easier rule because when we're multiplying and dividing, we round our result to the same number of sig figs as the least sig fig input. So I've got four sig figs as the smallest number, right? Four is smaller than five. So I better round that result to four sig figs. So there's addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. That's going to get us through 99% of the things that we're going to work on. Uh, what if we've got mixed operations? Mixed operations, we do them in exactly the same way that we would if we were doing uh, when we're doing the, the math, right? So in this case, I've got, um, I've got numbers enclosed in a parentheses, so that's going to be evaluated first. When I evaluate that, I get this value, which is uncertain in that first decimal place, right? Because I've got one, two, three, one, two, three sig figs going in, so one, two, three sig figs going out with multiplication happening there. And now I'm adding. So 
I should round my result to the same decimal position as the least precise input. So I round to that first decimal position there. So again, why do we worry about sig figs? What's the point of sig figs? The point of sig figs is to communicate what a number really means. So uh, we've got a lot of context clues that help us determine that. Sig figs is just one of the ways that we report numbers to be specific about their meaning and about their uh, accuracy and precision. Just like all the other things that we do in, in class, practice. You need practice. You need to round everything. That's why when I'm doing problems, uh, I will always try to take a moment to very explicitly uh, analyze sig figs just for more practice over and over and over again. So make sure you're using them, make sure you're practicing them all the way through. And <clears throat> let's take a look at a quick problem just, just to see where this comes into play. So uh, you're purchasing a bunch of small steel ball bearings that each weigh 0 0.0825 grams. So let's take a look here. 0 0.0825 grams, that is three sig figs. You put two scoops of those ball bearings in a bag and bring it up to the checkout, and they tell you that the cons or they tell you that the bag weighs 2.3 kilograms. That's two sig figs. How many ball bearings are you buying? Well, let's set that up. You know, here we've got the problem set up here. And we are buying, what, 27,878.788 ball bearings. Well, let's think about that for a minute. Can you buy 0.788? of a ball bearing? No. So in this case, at a minimum, we would be rounding this, we'd want to round this off to uh, an integer value because these are discrete individual items. But we also have the challenge of this number right here. My input only has two significant figures, 2.3 kilograms. Do we really think that we've got 27,879 ball bearings? We probably don't. We probably have a number really close to that. So let's round that to two sig figs again, based on that number. And we'll report this as 28,000 ball bearings uh, rounded off to two sig figs. So there's a just a quick little run through of sig figs rules and an example. Um, make sure that you keep practicing and uh, always think about sig figs. Think about what that really means in the context of the problems you're working on.